shared through this pre-recorded video. Please take a look at this video. Thank you. Hello, we are Antoine student from France. Allow me to introduce you to our school and the France video game industry. France can count on big companies like Ubisoft, but a wide range of various indie studios have found success in recent years. Maybe you heard about the wholesome heaven or the action-packed dead cell, or about the yet to be released door dawn or the beautiful seafood. On another note, you surely heard about Plague Tale Innocence, Life is Strange, Tizen Art, or Wilson produced by mid-sized French studio. This diversity of studio makes France an appalling country to learn and join game development. The Management School is a French public school entirely devoted to video games and interactive digital media. It is located in Angoulême and it's the only public school providing training in video game profession in France. The CNA management offers its students four diploma courses. First, such means master degrees. Second, the interactive digital experience specialized master. Third, the CNA computer science engineering diploma. And fourth, the computer science bachelor degree. Our master program lasts for two years, including six months of a mandatory internship. Each student has their own specialty among six core game development fields. Here, students will learn how to become producers, game artists, game designers, sound designers, game programmer, or even ergonomists. What makes this program quite special is that during these two years, every student will learn the basic notions of every specialty before learning their own more in depth. In addition, about half of the degrees program is dedicated to making game projects in a diverse team. We actually learn to work with other fields of specialty and simulate typical game studio development teams. The annual project is a way for us to exercise creating a short gaming experience within a complete team during three months. The end result is then played and reviewed by judges coming from the video game industry during the engineering game show. Through these events, we are pushed forward into the video game industry as all work done on our games is then used to highlight our skills in front of recruiters and video game makers. This year, the P17, the class we belong to, produced 12 games in total, which are all very different from one another. Those games are the Adam du Bois or The Lady of the Wood is a short story driven adventure set in the 15th century in France in which you play as a healer from the woods. Paper Tail is a quiet and contemplative exploration game in which, as a small paper golem, you face the rain and the bad weather to protect the villagers. In other hits, you become a robot which, following a technical failure, sees its UV light turn into destructive lasers. Control the lasers with an eye tracker and try to reach the factory repairer while trying to cause the least possible disruption to the production. In the beauty of the art of game, you become a god and work along with your divine partner in order to make your people coexist despite their violent behavior. Touch Me Up is a game where emotions are linked to textiles by the sense of touch. Through them, help Bjorn to find inspiration before the next fifth stitch level. In Lara Khadija, explore an odd mystical world through the imagination of a child thanks to the game's outstanding controller, a donkey. Russell is an ambient seated VR game in which you try to spend a last peaceful night in a forest with a longtime friend, Diane, before making a leap into the frightening adult life. In Metafarder, with a partner, play as the same character but control either the body or the camera in this enigmatic, mind bending, asymmetrical, cooperative puzzle game. Okay. In Capture the Moment, unveil with your camera the memories of a former archaeologist and photographer living his final dream. B 
Bill is the protagonist in her own short interactive graphic novel. Stuck in a boring routine, follow her in her new life as a forest ranger in an incredible botanical park. Shocklane is a fast-paced racing game in which you embody an aggressive vehicle. Switch between elements and run into your opponents to win the race. In Spirit Way to the Lighthouse, play as a lonely old sea dog sailing aboard his third wealthy fishing boat during his final journey across the sea towards Haven. Now let's discuss more in depth about the seven games from the engine that were selected for the big festival. We invited different members from the teams who worked on these projects to tell you about their experiences and how the games were made. We are now going to present Bull on behalf of the original team who wasn't available for this video. Bull is a short interactive story on tablets and smartphones, inspired by children's literature and graphic novels. Here's the pitch. Stuck in her cinema employee routine, Bull dreams of an adventure through movie posters. When she comes across an offer for a job on the other side of the world, she seizes the opportunity. Follow Bull in her new life as a forest ranger in an incredible botanical Bull is a 20-minute text-free interactive experience designed for people of all age. The game uses several features of the device, such as touchscreen, gyroscope, and accelerometer. During the game production, the team worked as if it was a movie animation studio. At the very beginning, the game designers wrote the story script and created the storyboard. From it, the 2D artist Leticia designed the characters, the environments, and drew hundreds of sprites for the game designers, Julia and Nicola, that could animate them on Unity frame by frame. Moreover, the developer Hugo made some design tools so they could create small interactions by simply dragging scripts in the engine. Clara, the UX designers on the game, organized playtests early in the process to test the narration in the interaction's accessibility on players. Jan, the composer and sound designer, composed the soundtracks and was responsible for the sound effects integration in the game. It was a real challenge for the six members to make an enjoyable game for everyone and they are very happy with the results. You can now find the game on Google Play Store and soon on the Apple Store. Lotus Moment is a first-person exploration game where you play as a grandfather who is living the very last moment of his life. So, it happens in the surreal 3D environment created by his mind. He is reliving his life by taking pictures of objects that represent his most vulnerable memory. The game was made in three months by a team of five students from the CNAM Engineering School, like many other student projects from the school. For all the members, it was our big life project, so it was very exciting and we are very happy with the result. I was personally the 3D artist and I created all the environments during these three months. For the 2D part in the game, I asked for some help, so Iris supported me by creating all the 2D animation and the drawing in the journal. Benoit, the programmer and tech artist, helped me with the shader like the water, for instance. For my part, in agreement with my team, I really wanted to create a beautiful environment where players would like to walk around and discover all the place. It was a big challenge because I had just discovered 3D. So, it was not easy, but I'm very proud of the result and I hope you will enjoy it too. To finish, with my team, we just want to say thank you very much for this opportunity to present our work. It's very important for us and it means a lot. We hope you like the presentation and that you will enjoy the game even more. Bye! Echo of the Sky is a 3D musical puzzle platformer taking place in a fictional universe inspired by India and Hinduism. You play as Saira, a merchant that can alter her environment by singing magical chants. Compared to all projects presented here, Echo of the Sky is a video game made during our second and last year of master's degree, since we are students from the previous year. The main difference is that we have about four months to realize a fully polished vertical slice of a bigger game. 
The exercise is different and trains us to prototype and present our project to potential investors, publishers, but also regional funds. Sometimes, teams from those projects can decide to form a small independent studio in order to pursue the development and finish the whole game. We were also a bigger team of 10 people. We had three artists that worked on characters, concept art, environment art, and tech art. As the game and level designer of the team, I worked with the narrative designer to narrow down the universe and then helped our artist to develop an art direction by doing architectural research about Indian buildings and temples. We then focused on a specific style as a reference and designed our own fantasy world based around it. This experience has brought us a lot of new skills and introduced us to many new techniques and softwares. Since we have to do an internship right after this project, we have been able to realize how much we've learned, even if it was just an introduction. For example, it was the first time I worked with 3D artists on a big environment level. From this, they developed a lot of skills like creating modular material or meshes, and I practiced a lot on greyboxing and level dressing. From the whole Echo of the Sky team, we thank you and wish you to enjoy our game as much as we enjoyed developing it. to talk to you about Lala Kedija. Uh, so Lala Kedija was one of our first games for all of for the five of us. It was a great experience and we are thrilled and excited to present the world of Nelia, an eight years old little girl. Our strength was to create an amazing controller which is not a joystick nor a keyboard or not even a mouse but a real donkey. Yeah, a donkey. We completed our mission and made it real, but unfortunately you won't be able to play uh, on the donkey in Busan. On this project, I was alone as an artist. I did all the 3D and 2D models, uh, like uh, the environment, the animation, the characters, the textures. However, I was helped by two other amazing students who did the VFX they fix and the shutter like water spells and post processing. In our school, we are used to help each other uh, in various way and during all the year. One year before, I never touched a 3D software, not even a game engine. So what we did, look, look what we did today! It's amazing to be able to create such a things uh, in one year. Uh, I I'm really grateful my school for letting us have uh, such a creative and artistic freedom. Over It is a game in which you control a robot whose UV light has become a destructive laser after an accident. Control the laser effectively and try to reach the factory repairer while causing the least possible damage to the production. The originality of the project was the use of an eye tracker device to control the laser on the screen. The eye tracker, using infrared technology, is deducting the position of your gaze on the screen. We then use this data to make the laser orient to where you are looking. As such, we were able to produce a 10-minute experience filled with interesting puzzles and interactions. Of course, the opportunity of making this project was mainly possible by, by the nature of the engineering school, as we are encouraged to create not only games, but also challenging concepts or even digital installation. For this first year project, we are not compelled to conform to the current video game market, but are also free to experiment some new concepts as crazy as it can be. For Hover It, we chose the eye tracker as we were eager to test some new concept using it, but at GNGMIN, you can also use for a project various VR devices, an eye tracker, a HoloLens, or even a 3D printing machines to build some digital installation, for example. It was a real pleasure to challenge ourselves in making an eye tracker game. As a game and level designer myself, it was really an interesting experience to work with the eye tracker device and designing the gameplay and the interaction that go with it. Looking to burn, to melt, or even to explode some things can have a great effect on the environment of the game. The notion of chaos was really at the center of the making of Over It, and we wanted to fill the game with interesting interactions. 
I also worked with an ergonomist and he greatly helped us in making clever decisions about which color attract the player gaze, for example, or which interaction was frustrating or exhausting to do with an eye tracker. We conduct some user experiments tests during the development that were really helpful in confirming our intuitions or correcting some aspect of the gameplay. The whole team was really committed to make a believable environment from the 3D props to the lighting or to the sound effects and music. For our 3D artist, Dorian, it was really important to have multidisciplinary skills. From shaders to VFX to the rigging of Over It, Dorian created them all and thus needing only little help in animating the robots, permitting Over It to look the way it does today. Also, we had a great internal communication. The atmosphere of the team was friendly and we knew quite well the constraints of each other's work, which is very important in video game creation. We hope that you like the Overweight universe as much as we loved building it, and we are thrilled to read your reviews. Even if you don't have an eye tracker, don't hesitate to play the game. Even if the game is less challenging, you can still immerse yourself in the Overweight universe and have a good time. Have a good conference! Hello everyone! Russell is a VR experience which lets you in the company of Tian, your friend, in the middle of a camping night in the forest. Seated around the campfire, something wakes you up and you can take advantage of the moment to experience cooking marshmallows, playing the guitar, and listening to the many stories Diane wants to share with you. As many other games developed in the engine, this was one of the first game-making experiences for a lot of members of the team, especially in a VR environment. Eight students were involved in the development, one programmer, one game designer, three graphic artists, one ergonomist and two sound designers. One of the best benefits of the school is that it helps you to learn how to work as a team and take advantage of the many visions everyone can have while working on the same project. Also, we are pushed to experiment with different software by ourselves as a way of learning as it's a key to be efficient in a future job in the industry which often requires you to learn a lot of stuff on the go and by yourself. Graphically speaking, what you'll see in the game is a stylized forest landscape with a vivid color palette, emphasized with techniques like cell shading and hot shadows. Every environmental element is a mix of 2D planes and 3D items. Everything has been thought of in order to let the player behave in this beautiful world without any discomfort due to VR technology. I've been working as one of the two sound designers and as the composer for Russell. The main part of my job was to highlight the visual experience by finding meaningful ambient sounds which will help the player to apprehend what he's seeing. For that, we went to record real forest ambiences by night with microphones provided by the school. Also, working on a VR experience requires being really careful about the way sound is treated in order to be coherent with the scene the player will see especially on the specialization of old sounds related to their actions. That's why we worked with binaural audio, a technology reproducing audio specialization in a more accurate way, as we could experiment with it at the school in sound classes. We really hope you will like to play at Russell and are very thankful for the opportunity BIC provides to the team. Spiritway the Lighthouse is a first-person adventure game set in a fantasy world where you play as Per, an old man from Brittany, sailing aboard his trustworthy boat, the Morbar. For most of the team, it wasn't the first game we had worked on. Personally, I had worked on a few tiny games before joining the engine, but I think Spiritway was a big challenge for all of us because of the goals we set within this experience and because of the story we were trying to convey through the through its 
whole life through. The team was made of five people, a developer, a producer, a sound designer, a UX UI designer, and me as the game artist. Even though our team was small, being able to work among people with complementary skills was a pure joy. Because as an artist, I could focus on the art direction, concept arts, and asset production. And the same goes for the rest of the team who could focus on the subjects they were interested in. The frame the Knam Engine provides us to develop those projects gives a lot of room for creativity. Overall, we learned a lot through the development of, the, of this game. First, because of all the technical challenges we encountered uh, and the problematics experienced, but in second hand, because of the environment provided by the school. As example, being able to chat with the game developer while working helped me going through a lot of trouble using the Unity game engine. But also, it let me have a glimpse of what his works uh, look like. All the team wish you will enjoy our game, and once again, we are thankful towards the big festival who included Spirit with the Lighthouse among their selected games. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, everybody, for talking about your experience. Unfortunately, all of our teams couldn't be here to present their projects. However, you can visit our Engmin bundle on Itch.io and watch all of our trailers. 좋게 발표 들어주셔서 감사합니다. 안녕히 계세요. Thank you very much, Busan Indie Connect Festival, for this opportunity and featuring us in this conference. Thank you very much. Merci, au revoir.